Uh, good evening and uh, Happy New Year. Uh, welcome to the Cape Elizabeth School Board meeting of January 12, 1999. And the first item on uh, this evening's agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, we do have a board member absent this evening, um, Kevin Sweeney, uh, had a, a bit of an unfortunate mishap at their home, and uh, I don't want to make it into something bigger than what it is, but um, I guess there was uh, a, a bit of a problem with a, a fire, and uh, there were some, uh, some injuries, not major injuries, uh, thank goodness, but some injuries that um, were sustained by some of the family members. So. Uh, Kevin, if you're watching uh, this evening, um, and he told us that he was going to, um, we're thinking about you and hope everybody gets well soon. Um, moving on to the next item on the agenda is adjustments to the agenda. I have two additions. Okay. We need to approve a staff development grant, and that will be under new business. So we'll put that as item F. Mm -hmm. And I have an additional policy for first reading. It's EBCA. It's on crisis incidents. EBCA. Okay, and we'll just add that to the policies piece. I'd like to add an item under committee reports 8E, uh, Athletic Steering Committee. Are there other adjustments to the agenda? Seeing none, I'll move on. Um, approval of December school board minutes. And uh, we're talking about the meeting of December 8th. Any adjustments to that? Seeing none, they would be approved and we'd move on and uh, invite comments from our high school representatives. Hi, I'm Alicia, this is Jeff. Um, there hasn't been too much going on since we last met, but there are a few events that we'd like to share with you all. Um, the PSAT results came in sometime before vacation, and I believe we did, um, there was a lot of good results. We had a bunch of people who are potentially National Merit Scholars, I believe. Um, we had a semi-formal for the whole school um, put on by the SAC the night before vacation, and that went really well. There was a very good attendance, and um, we made a lot of money from that for a fundraiser. Um, winter sports are halfway through. Um, Nordic's doing really well, Cape Nordic ski, um, along with basketball and the other sports. Um, we have midterms coming up next week. It should be fun. Um, we have a, oh, there was a field trip to the rock gym last Friday, which the gym classes, um, I think the physical education classes went on to conclude their um, climbing unit. And, yep, and that happened last Friday. I'm uh, Jeff Butterworth, senior at Cape Elizabeth High School. Um, I have a few, a few things uh, to bring up uh, in, in uh, some more events in the fine arts department of the high school. We have uh, coming up for the theater department, we have the one acts. And those will, those will progress and the, the uh, players will rehearse over the course of the winter and the final shows will be March 12th and 13th uh, at the high school. Uh, these, the, uh, the one acts will compete around the state uh, to try and win prizes and honors uh, from different competitions hopefully go all the way to states like they did last year. Uh, but you know, we can only hope for the best. Um, Mr. Mullen said that he wants to have another uh, musical emphasis on the one acts um, as he did with the fall show with the, uh, with the, the uh, swing, uh, swing era theme and uh, he, he, he says he'd like to have another jazz music sort of feel to it. Um, 
Jazz band is also, uh, the Cape Elizabeth Jazz Band is also going to have uh, some competitions coming up, some concerts, uh, along with the Cape Elizabeth Jazz Band 2, as well as the Jazz Combo and the Jazz Combo 2. Um, the most, the, uh, <clears throat> the most uh, prevalent uh, contests that are coming up are going to be, the, I, I believe, the District uh, Festival at uh, Biddeford, which will be on February uh, 6th and the Berkeley trip, uh, which is coming up on February 13th. Um, the, uh, the, um, I know, I know you'd, you'd expressed some interest last time when we uh, concluded the debate about the project graduation and the graduation uh, decision. Uh, and well, we, we have some information for you tonight about, about what we will be doing that night of graduation. Uh, we have scheduled a reservation at UNE, uh, just like they did in 1996. Uh, there will be activities. We're not sure what there will be. We'll try to get a DJ and some other recreation, uh, recreational activities for the students pr to participate in. Uh, we also managed to raise $11,000 in calendars, or at least the uh, parents, uh, the uh, parent portion of the uh, project graduation um, effort. Uh, half of that will be profit, I believe, the other half going towards the actual production of the calendars. Uh, but we have the reservations, and there will be a possible senior trip um, in fact, we will meet as a class uh, fairly soon to discuss that. Um, possibly a one-day rafting trip, not quite as large an endeavor as was originally planned, but uh, certainly something to allow the class to bond before we all go off to our respective colleges. Um, more good news coming from the high school. We've had a lot of early acceptances to college. Uh, some students are very pleased about that. Um, we have, there have also regrettably been some deferences uh, from people's, top, people's uh, top choice schools, but it was only a deference. They'll be shifted into the larger pool and I'm sure they'll get in, you know, in their due time when they want to. Uh, I only have one issue of malcontent to bring up tonight before, <laughs> before the um, uh, school board, which was the, uh, which was concerns the building of the new pool, the construction of the new pool. I know that there will be a Nautilus room or a weight room uh, put in for, uh, for team use, but it was brought up at the last SAC meeting that this would possibly be only available for student use during team and sports time, not, on, not of free uh, volition or um, for regular use. Uh, it was actually discussed that community services might possibly um, try to ask for uh, money uh, for a membership fee. And uh, unfortunately, we don't, we don't actually have any grounds to, uh, to actually claim this, but we were wondering if there was anything uh, that you know of this, of this uh, occurrence. Well, I can just say I'm on the pool committee. Okay. Um, and there is a planned new weight room um, as part of the project. Um, as you know, the existing weight room was in a hallway that blocked off things, and either mm -hmm. it was going to be eliminated and we would have <coughs> no space for a weight room. And the committee actually worked very hard to get both spectator seating and a weight room in the plan that was proposed. Mm -hmm. um, that whole area of the high school is going to be turned into a community pool, and it will officially not be under the school budget anymore okay. or anything. And the weight room will be run and the pool differently than it is now. And Sue Weatherby is working very hard on all those details and things. And I'm not sure everything's been decided because we're just trying to figure everything out. But I think the thought is it will run as a separate facility. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the way that that cost was sold to the community and the pool members was having a fitness center would really add revenues. You could have a card that was a pool and a uh, weight room card, or just a pool card, or just a weight room. And um, so, yes, there may be some fees associated with it. But as everything community service runs, it's very reasonable, and it's usually, you know, to cover costs. Mm -hmm. And as for access, I'm not sure what hours it's going to be open, and and those kind of things. But I'm sure if you guys have some input. Um, the pool committee and uh, Sue Weatherby would be glad to hear and listen, and you guys would be glad to hear the other side too. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that's certainly reasonable, you know, or certainly expectable uh, for um, community services to want to, you know, profit from their, you know, it'll be their space. So uh, 
we just you know wanted some uh, some truth to the truth, truth to the rumor. It's not community services space. It's actually going to be the Cape Elizabeth community pool oh, facility now. Oh. Okay. So it'll will it? A it'll town, be more town run. A town run one. Mm, yeah. Okay. All right. That sounds fine. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. Any other? Uh, hold on. Just any other questions for our Are there questions? high school reps? Speaking of pool, you get to use the pool at UNE when you're there for project graduation? Um, I would imagine so. That's what happened in 1996. Uh, so possibly uh, that's one of the recreational activities being looked into. Okay. Other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. I think Sue had a question. Oh, Sue. Oh, would you like to comment on some sure, of the sure. questions that Jeff asked? In preparing the pool budget, um, I do plan to meet with the high school administration um, and the athletic department in regard to um, when the facility will be available to students. And I believe that we will be trying to work in some time frame during the school year where there can be a curriculum um, based around proper use of, of equipment and the weight room. Um, and that will be part of the physical education curriculum at no cost to the students. I think, too, we're trying to build in some times for the athletic teams, um, perhaps some downtime in the middle of the afternoon when the community may or may not um, have access to that space. None of those things have been decided, as Beth said. Um, the committee is going to finalize those things, but it, it, it is in our thought process that there will be a period of time where students on a particular athletic team would not pay to access the facility. Um, we also plan to have a, a card that students can have a membership with that during free periods during the day they can access the weight room, and yes, that would be a membership fee um, and a very cost-effective means for them to access, access it and also have some professional guidance in, use, in utilizing the space. So none of that stuff's been decided. I'm glad Beth clarified that it's not a community services space. It will be a department under um, the municipality and we will be managing it, but none of the fees come to community services. It's not even part of our budget any longer. So does uh, that answer your question? Yes. And, and having student input on the committee probably is a great idea, too. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sue. We'd like to uh, have comments from our middle school representatives now. I'm Amelia Wiggins, and this is uh, Marianne <laughs> Chapman. Um, there was a winter carnival for the courses and bands that went well. It was for almost all of the grades and went very well. We had a large audience. And um, the seventh grade, seventh and eighth grade are having a career fair, um, the 28th, and we'll be seeing three professions each. Um, a lot of people are looking forward to that. And also we'll be discussing careers in some of the advisory classes to follow up on that. There's a geography bee. There was a geography bee in our school for all the grades. So congratulations to Colin and Stephanie, who were the winner and runner-up. Uh, there's drama rehearsals after school each day for the play Oz that our school is putting on. Um, there's midterms coming up for some of the eighth grade and seventh grade language arts and math classes. Uh, girls basketball is ending this week, and the boys basketball will be uh, beginning after that. Um, we had a dance the Friday before Christmas vacation, winter vacation. Um, we charged an extra dollar. Um, that money went towards two needy families to have a good Christmas. Um, we will have another dance on February 5th. Um, instead of the 5th and 6th grade social this month, they will be going to Happy Wheels. Also this month, um, we will have another tryout of block scheduling. This time we will have 70 minute classes instead of 90 minutes. Uh, progress reports are coming out next Friday. The eighth grade has foreign language assessments coming up to determine placement for their ninth grade classes in the, for the high school. Any questions? Questions? 
I think so. Thank you very much. Thank you. Moving on to uh, communications. Beth. Uh, just because the pool was brought up, I thought I'd do a quick update. Um, the pool committee will be meeting Thursday night this week at 7 o'clock if anyone is interested. Did, did you get the new memo that's been moved until Monday the 18th? There's no pool committee meeting on Thursday? Didn't get the Monday the 18th, that's the holiday? holiday. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> Pool has committee meeting has been moved to Monday the 18th. Um, <laughs> the holiday. Um, right now, the pool committee is working very hard to get final details done. It's hoped that the plans will go out to bid, and the construction will begin about the first week in April, which is a very um, aggressive plan. And then the pool would reopen in time for the high school swim season in the middle of November, middle to late November. It's a very aggressive schedule. Um, and we will be looking at it and working on it. Other communications? Uh, just a brief uh, note that the school board and town council uh, had a budget meeting uh, last Monday on the, I think it was the 4th. Uh, I just wanted to thank the town council. Uh, we had good discussions about uh, the upcoming budget season and uh, the town's needs with, uh, with the, the pool renovation as well as land purchase and, and that type of thing as well as uh, a number of the school issues that we have coming up in our budget season. Other communications? We'll move on uh, to the superintendent's report. First item is to schedule a visit to PADS, and that really is there to remind you that every month we try to do the schedule the visit. And I know this is a busy month coming up, so we maybe should postpone it again, but especially since Kevin is not here. But I, I know they do expect you and they're looking forward to your visit, so hopefully Good. that will happen soon. And the second item is, I did want to mention to you that I have been in conversation with Jean Ginmarvin, who was the representative from Cape Elizabeth, relative to introducing legislation to clarify the meaning of conflict of interest as it relates to service on local school boards. And I'll have more information for you later. In terms of the... Um the schedule, it might, be, it might be easier for board members, perhaps if, if they could look, look out several weeks and, and give us a couple of days or something, and then Mary could email us and we could respond back, so that it, that's probably the best way to, to uh, coordinate a, a scheduled visit, would you say? Is that, would that work best for, for everyone? For January? Um, I'm thinking probably beyond January. And it would need to be a morning time or no later than one o'clock, probably. At least when the students are there. If they could maybe pick a, a couple of days, you know, that, and then we could just sign on or, or not based on our schedules, that'd be good. Um, principal's reports, uh, starting with Nancy, middle school. Good evening. Uh, as Amelia and Mary Ann said, we do have our next experiment with block scheduling coming up. That will be on the 20th, 21st, and 22nd. Uh, in this design, we try to incorporate some of the suggestions for improvement we had from the last time. The classes will last 70 minutes. There will be a five minute passing time. Last time we tried 10 and people found that to be a little long. None of those people were under the age of 15 who found it too long, but many of those who are over 15 in our building found it to be rather long. We also scheduled an outside break for each grade level. This is consistent with our current practice for grades five and six, but something that we're adding for grades seven and eight for this particular three-day trial. We're going over the three days so that um, theoretically, the students will see each one of their classes twice in those three days, but will not see any class all of the time. We do have one slight variation to that. In the fifth grade, there was one class that remains as a 50-minute period and goes all three days. The same thing occurs in the sixth grade. And we needed to do that around scheduling the cafeteria, the um, outside facilities for use, and some of our shared personnel. So it seemed to be an answer to that. We look forward to that experiment. and. We'll have some feedback for you, hopefully, by the next board meeting. I know that Amelia and Mary Ann will have the student voice um, back for you, and we'll certainly get some faculty and staff input as well. 
One of the goals that we had for the middle school this year was to do a program review of our challenge language arts and accelerated math classes. That is well underway. We have, the committee has met three times. We have our fourth meeting coming up this Thursday. We have representatives from each grade level, from the guidance department. We have representatives from Pond Cove have been joining us. Claire comes as the overall director of the Gifted and Talented program. And we've been having some very energetic discussions. We have, first of all, we did a current a review of uh, the status, the current status, and established that for all of our committee members. Some people on the committee know it very, very well. Um, for some people, it was newer information. We have two parent members on our committee, too, that I forgot to mention. We also have gone through a review of recent research that has been written. Hayden Atwood did a um, review for us and got information from the library. We've also come across some other information. Karen Driscoll, one of our committee members, is enrolled in a class on developing uh, programs for gifted and talented students. And I also had some things sent to us um, from another source. So we've been trying to stay current with literature and what people are saying. We are, this week we are going to be looking at tools, the tools we use for selection and things that we might want to change there. One important decision that the committee is unanimous on is that we decided we do not have gifted and talented programming at the Cape Elizabeth Middle School. We do have some accelerated programming to be a purist gifted and talented programming from all the definitions that we've been able to find. You really need to identify just two to five percent of your population. Most programs have some sort of a cutoff on an IQ test and if the cutoff is 135, if you have an IQ of 134, you're out of the program. For the success of our program and our, meeting our community needs, we feel that we can better address that by offering accelerated programs to the, our current numbers would indicate from 13 to 18 percent. About 13 percent of our student body is involved in the Challenge Language Arts program. That's covering all four grade levels. And about 18, 17, 18 percent is involved in accelerated math covering all four grade levels. Those are the programs that the committee feels very strongly are appropriate for our school and for our system. So we are not a specific gifted and talented program, but more acceleration. In our next staff meeting, we are going to be getting a two-part discussion. It may be longer than that on the issue of homework. Um, we have found everyone has at least one opinion on homework, um, if not many more, and we want to have a really good discussion about it. Uh, we're not leading. The proposal is not that we eliminate homework um, at the middle school, but more we're trying to define what types of things do we want to have for homework, what is meaningful homework, and what is a manageable amount of homework. So we're looking forward to that discussion. I have talked with some students about that. I've got some student input. We look to get more student input. But it will be a discussion that will begin at our January staff meeting, which is next week, and then follow through again with our February staff meeting, and perhaps beyond that as well, but certainly those two times. The um, Amelia and um, Marianne, the reporters, have already told you progress reports come out. The last item I'd like to share with you is one that you'll be acting on later, but this is my opportunity to thank um, Marty Watts, who has submitted his letter of his intention to retire from the Cape Elizabeth School System. Marty has been here for 32 years. He is an innovative educator, a very talented teacher, a very demanding teacher, and a well-respected teacher. Marty began many of our programs. He began our gifted and talented programming at the Cape Elizabeth Middle School. He helped set up and run our first computer lab. He has moved on from some of these tasks um, to do other things. He started his career here teaching science, though. And five years ago, when we were making some changes in the direction in our computer lab, and I asked Marty if he would be willing to go back to teaching science, he said, well, of course, anything that, that is needed to do, I'd be glad to do that. And I have taught science before. It was probably three days into the school year when he stopped by my office, a big smile on his face, and said, thank you. I'm having the time of my life. And one of the visions I will always have of Marty Watts is three years ago, we hosted the Triple C Science Fair. And the fair ended with a demonstration by Marty and Tom Wilbur, two of our science teachers, doing a science experiment. I do believe those two gentlemen, and especially Mr. Watts, could have stayed in that cafeteria 
blowing up little science things all night long. There was a, certainly a look of delight and excitement on their faces. I know when I walk into Marty's science classes, you find that same energy and excitement that he has shared with the students. He has done an outstanding job with our Challenge Language Arts program. And many, many times we get phone calls back, he gets letters back from students who have gone through that program and have said, Mr. Watts, you prepared me the best of anyone for all my challenges ahead, and thank you very much. We certainly would want to add a big thank you to that for all those 32 years that he spent with us and wish him good luck in his plans ahead. Any questions? Questions for Nancy? Nancy, Amelia and Marianne mentioned that Geography B and the two students had excelled. Stephanie and Colin. another first name, but Colin. probably ought to have the two last names. We will get those to you. Okay. Questions? We're all set. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, moving on to comments from Pond Cove. Tom. Good evening. I just want to let you know that Marla and I just came from the final uh, grade level curriculum meeting. The uh, first grade one was held tonight. I want to thank the parents for their patience and understanding because we had to defer that from the fall and for the uh, first grade team for coming out tonight. It wasn't quite as well attended as the ones in the fall. That's understandable, but I, I think it went pretty well. We also had an interesting PCPA meeting right after school today at 3.20. 40 or 50 people came to a PCPA meeting and eight or 10 teachers to talk about looping. So we, I think we have now have a common understanding of what looping is, what the benefits are, what the possible downsides are, what the logistical things could be about. And our next step with your approval would be to pin down some of the commitments. If all goes well, I think we might have some loopers next year. I, when I write loopers on the computer and get spell checked, it gives me loppers and looters, but we're talking about looping here. That was pretty exciting uh, for the attendance and the level of sophistication from the parents, and I want to thank the teachers who attended the conference who have done their research, too. School quality review is on. We have at least six people on the team. Uh, we're doing the final work preparing for them. We should be all set, ready to go. They'll be here on January 28th. They'll do a quick report out on February 3rd. Um, they'll be visiting the school, looking at documentation, and interviewing teachers, students, and parents and staff members. So after that, uh, just to remind you, we'll get a written report in the mail that we get to react to. The SQR chair or team members will come back to talk to us about the report, what they've seen, what they didn't see, how we agree or disagree. And I hope from that we can come up with a long-term school improvement plan for Pond Cove. I think it's a pretty exciting prospect. Cynthia, this is not Ponco specific. Should I mention the professional development grant now? Uh, each year, um, for the past few years, the legislature has set aside a pool of money to support local schools and their professional development opportunities to implement the learning results. Last year, we successfully applied, Cynthia did, and we got about $7,000 for substitutes and stipends to do the linking tool work that we reported to you about. This year, the rules have changed a little bit, and we're, we're going to focus on our, um, the target for this year is assessment. And we have about $7,000 again that we're applying for. I hope you support that. That would go to teachers or teams of teachers to come up with uh, assessments for the classroom. When I say the rules have changed, in order to get the money this year, we have to submit a, uh, a huge portfolio. And Mary Bruns was the ones who dug up I think she may have enjoyed it, but she found all the documents that we could, she didn't. Um, I, I want to personally thank Mary because I find the documentation really interesting and we'll probably use it for the school card review visiting team and the science grant too, so thank you, Mary. And that will be F on the agenda to do business. Any questions? Yeah. Marie. Um, 40 or 50 people sounds like it yeah. was a great meeting. Yeah. Um, are, were all of those people in support of looping? Is that I, I asked at the end. Um, there, I mean, there are some questions about you know, how you get in and out of it, but the, the consensus was that they really support it and were very positive about it. And how many teachers do you have that are in favor of that connection? Um, we probably, I mean, up till today we had six or eight. But I think after today, with that kind of public support, we'll have more which would be interesting. And just so people know, this is voluntary for teachers and voluntary for families, too. But the, the prospects look good. 
So is that like a first and second grade thing and then a third and fourth grade? Is that how it? It could be, you know. Um, it, ideally, it would be a first and second grade teacher pairing up for a year, but there's also been some interest expressed in a second and third. And I think it's, it, it's going to be the school's position to support people who want to do something like that. So, you know, perfectly it would be one, two, three, four, but I think we might have some two, threes. But I think by next month I'll have more to report to you. We have to get this done by placement time, right? Questions for Tom? The school quality review, will there be a time for board members to meet with that team like can, in the middle school? Yeah, we can arrange that. They don't specifically say that, but we can do that. Come as a board member or a parent or yeah. what you like. Other questions? Thank you, Tom. You're welcome. And uh, principal's report from the high school, Peter. Good evening. As was mentioned by Alicia and Jeff, semester exams will uh, take place next week, the January 19th through the 22nd. There will be four days of exams. Uh, we will be using the same format that we have in the past, two exams, uh, the possibility of two exam periods per day, uh, two hours each with a half hour between the two, and students will be uh, coming to school when they have exams. They will not need to be in school when they uh, are not involved with exams. Uh, two of our athletic teams uh, recently uh, garnered honors that I think are very uh, significant. Uh, many of you may have seen a recent uh, article in the Portland Press Herald where our girls soccer team this year has been selected as one of only 80 girls teams across the country uh, to receive the National Soccer Coaches Association of America Team Academic Awards. And it's an award that takes into consideration that the baseline is uh, grade point average uh, that they need to be uh, to be considered uh, 3.25 on a 4.0 scale. We don't have that scale, but that roughly is a, a B plus uh, type of uh, average for the whole team. Uh, and then they look at the excellence of the team itself, the quality of the, of the play. Uh, and as I say, our uh, girls soccer team was selected as one of only 80 teams in the country. Uh, they will be honored at the uh, NSCAA convention in Philadelphia uh, in, on January 24th, so congratulations to Coach Charlie Carroll and the girls' soccer team. Uh, more recently, at the uh, Shop and Save Holiday Hockey Festival uh, at the Portland Ice Arena, uh, our ice hockey team uh, continued what is uh, almost becoming a tradition at this point uh, by winning the Sportsmanship Award for that, uh, uh, for that tourney. As many of you may remember, last year, uh, our uh, hockey team won the Western Class B Sportsmanship Award for the whole season uh, this year for this uh, tournament. They, uh, an outstanding tournament, they went to the semifinals, uh, but also, uh, maybe more importantly, walked away with the Sportsmanship Award. And, and I think that's uh, a tradition that uh, Sean, Coach Sean Rousseau uh, and the whole team can feel very good about. I know I do. Um, the Jeff uh, mentioned uh, the, some of the upcoming jazz events. I'd like to recap uh, an event that took place this past weekend, uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Six of our students were involved in the All-State Jazz Festival at South Portland uh, High School. Uh, because I was out of town, I wasn't able to attend, but all reports uh, that uh, I have heard was, uh, all reports were that uh, the six uh, CAPE students distinguished themselves, uh, all had uh, solo, earned solo and leadership uh, roles of their, in their sections. So I would like to commend uh, Jack Lombard, Nate Perry, Nick Falk, Tim Butterworth, Chris Gagney and Jamie Spaulding for a job extremely well done. And we look forward to uh, some exciting uh, music and, and other performing arts festivals coming up. Finally, at the beginning of the year, uh, as has been uh, the case in the last couple of years, the board had set as one of its goals that one of the divisions of the system will undergo external review uh, each year. And I had mentioned at that uh, point that I believed our five-year report would be 
uh, coming either at the second in the second half of this year or the first half of next school year. Uh, right before vacation, we did receive word uh, that we will be working on our uh, New England Association of Schools and Colleges five-year report uh, over the next two months uh, to be submitted uh, March 1st. Uh, of 99. So we, w we have begun forming the team that will be steering that process. It's primarily a process of uh, going back to the original uh, report from NEASC and the, the recommendations, uh, going back to the two-year progress report and updating uh, anything. If there are any recommendations that we uh, have chosen not to react to, uh, what is the status uh, of, uh, of each of the recommendations. So we'll be working on that over the next two months. Any questions? Questions for Pete? We're all set. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to now move on to committee reports, uh, the first being Finance Subcommittee. Keith. Uh, thanks. We met uh, before this meeting tonight in the, in the Jordan Conference Room. Uh, we discussed and approved an adjustment of hours in the co-curricular uh, stipend area. Uh, we're changing some of the hours in the speech debate area over, uh, and that's approved uh, pending the uh, approval of the appropriate union, uh, teachers union people and so forth. Uh, uh, we got some good news from the uh, Maine School Management Association that we're going to receive uh, over $7,000 in a rebate from uh, unemployment compensation. Uh, we looked at uh, the approval from the state for us to purchase a, a school bus. Uh, basically, the school bus costs the, the district about somewhere in the neighborhood of $60,000, and the state reimburses us uh, about 14000 of that, so we don't get a whole lot of reimbursement for that. Uh, we reviewed the food service report. Uh, there's still about $8,000 outstanding in, uh, in lunch uh, monies due. Uh, we reviewed the appropriation report, uh, and we're right on target for, for, the, for the year. Uh, and lastly, we looked at uh, some basic reports about uh, the expense of the superintendent's search. Uh, the one that we did two years ago, the grand total was about 7500 uh, and so far, uh, with, with over 5,000 of that 7,500 taken up in advertising costs, uh, uh, so far this year, basically the only uh, uh, costs we've incurred so far are the advertising costs, and which is at uh, 3,800. Uh, I think Beth is going to do a report on the superintendent search later. Okay, thank you. Um, policy. Subcommittee, Kevin is the chair. Uh, is there someone else that wants to report out? I was just going to do the policies under new business. Um, the policy committee meeting for this week, Thursday morning, is canceled. And as far as I know, Kevin has not rescheduled it. OK, thanks. Uh, next is the continuous improvement team uh, with the focus on time. Uh, we did meet um, Monday the 14th of December. Um, it was uh, a time for a little bit of reflection for that team to really look at uh, and review the, our purpose and our focus. Uh, we always have very um, exciting uh, discussions and dialogues. Um, my concern was that we perhaps were not moving those forward. Um, we're still struggling. Um, I think we are still str struggling with a strategy for making steps towards positive change, some of what we hear in terms of looping and scheduling um, alternatives and, and experiments are, have, have sort of been outcomes of this group discussion. Um, and we were feeling that we might need to push to have some more tangible results. Um, one of the areas that we started to focus on was time for development. That's uh, uh, staff development, teacher development. Um, and we had a discussion about sabbaticals and uh, mini sabbaticals and summer development time, and there was a lot of energy there um, recognizing that um, uh, one of the critical uh, time crunches is for, the, for staff to pursue their own development. And uh, there was a lot of energy around that discussion. I think we're going to talk more about it. Uh, we invite uh, new members. We'd like uh, to ask the principals to take a look at their representation um, on that committee 
uh, and uh, invite other uh, new members to, partic to participate. Um, one of the other things that we thought we might do is uh, begin to take a look outside of Cape Elizabeth at maybe what some other uh, districts are doing. Uh, we started this whole process with um, a bit of a study group and we felt that it might be appropriate to um, take a look at teacher time and collaboration time and maybe take a look at what some other districts might be doing. Um, the next meeting has not been set. Uh, we decided to take a bit of a, a rest through the holidays, kind of um, reflect a little bit more, and we're hoping that we can um, uh, move ahead on that focus of uh, development time and um, uh, when, once we uh, resume. So there'll be more about that to come. Update on the superintendent search. Uh, yep, we had uh, 28 applicants, completed applications for the superintendent's position. 14 were from within the state of Maine and 14 were from out of state. Um, we, as a board, met last night, Monday night, and we have about six to 10, 10 applicants we are still interested in. We will be interviewing our first round on Jan Thursday, January 21st and then Monday the 25th and Tuesday the 26th. And the members of the screening committee um, have been selected. There will be the three building principals, plus Claire Labrie, our director of special ed, two teachers, Ray Cooper from the high school and Kelly Hassan from Pond Cove, and two community representatives, um, Deb Cushing and Gary Weaver. And we will keep you updated as we go through the process. Thank you. Um, Excuse me, John. Yes. John. Uh, in reference to the policy subcommittee, I would like to make a request that they review or revisit when they have an opportunity in the near future, file GCG-R, that's long-term and short-term substitute professional staff employment. Uh, specifically, I believe I made a comment back in November in reference to the inconsistency and in giving uh, increases in pay prior to giving an evaluation. We just discussed it very briefly, but I thought maybe if they would revisit it. An issue for the policy committee. Right, so maybe bring it into some type of uh, uh, equality uh, as opposed to giving a raise and then doing an evaluation three weeks later. Maybe they can discuss that. Okay, we'll ask Kevin to um uh, have that subcommittee take a look at that. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, uh, the Athletic Steering Committee, and that's um, Keith? Yes. About the superintendent's search? About the search? Yes. Why don't you come forward? If you just um, please identify yourself. Hello, my name is Kathy Perkins, and I um, would like to know um, if there is a list of attributes you're looking for that was published, and actually is there a, a job description that's available for the public? The job description is not available right away. We just reviewed a, another draft of one last night, and we decided we're putting it out for another redraft. Okay. which I will work on as soon as uh, Cynthia and I have time. We just reviewed the latest draft last night. Okay. Um, as for the qualifications, yes, that is available. Um, I, or more I was looking for uh, at one workshop we had talked about what we thought was important in a superintendent. Now is that what That's we're talking available. about? Oh, the yes. qualities, okay. Yeah. And Mary, you have that upstairs? Yep. And when will the job description be available for the public? Um, I hope. I, I hope soon. Cynthia and I need to sit down and work on it. I, we got more feedback from the board last night. Um, I felt like we really needed, after the first interviews, that it was okay to get through the first interviews without the set job description, but after that we really needed it. So I guess that's sort of my deadline, maybe the 1st of February. Um, so before the job is filled, I'm hoping that we're going to have a job description. Very clearly, yes. Okay. There I, is a current job description. Yeah, but, it's but just we are trying to update it, change it, 
expand okay. it but not expand it too much okay it's a what it is it's a, it's a it, it's not a job description per se it's a laundry list of duties and what we're trying to do is make it truly into a more coherent job description so it's not as though it's going to be changed significantly except we're just going to try to make it more readable okay um, I don't I don't think that anything on there is not going to be an anticipated duty that this new superintendent will carry out nor is it uh, um, anything that this, the current superintendent is not doing um, it's just it's an exhaustive list of 43 items that is just unmanageable and the board felt that we really needed to consolidate under the under topics that um, make sense and give it some some more meaning really okay yeah and you but you're welcome I'm, I'm sure you're welcome to take a look at the you know the right. exhaustive list yeah and and list. and prior to that and then there will be a job description that comes along. we're, we're going to boil that down into okay. a okay a good job description that's readable. Okay, and I just have one more question. Um, I need some clarification. I have been to the workshops on um, the superintendent's search and um, the public input or the actual community people who are on the search committee. And I guess um, what I heard on the two that I had been to, the two workshops, was that the public was, or the community was invited to sort of boil down the first um, set of candidates and then after five you know they were sort of involved until you got to about five and then there was a confidentiality and I'm just wondering where the community is actually going to where the lines are going to be yeah. drawn for them right now the line is drawn that all of our candidates names are completely confidential and we need to keep it that way the two community members on a screening committee will sign confidentiality agreements as will board members, representatives, that they cannot even speak these people's names because these people may not have notified where they are that they're even looking somewhere. It, that makes so, sense. So there would be the only community involvement at this point is those two community members on the screening committee. But they don't have any of the information about the applicants currently? They do not as of this moment, but they will very shortly. Okay, so they, they didn't actually look at the original applications? And no, the only people that looked at the original applications was this board. Okay. And we are the ones who met last night and whittled the list of 28 down to six to 10. Okay. And then we will be interviewing them and the community reps will have access to some information about those applicants before they walk in the room but not their full um, application packet. After that, we will either go to a whole next round or a finalist round, that's unclear. Once a, a candidate becomes a finalist though, and they are go going through the schools and meeting teachers, students, seeing the buildings, then the confidentiality piece is not as key because they have then put themselves out to being a finalist and that's where we will have more opportunity for general community to meet these people but i can't promise you it, we may have an, a middle round in there that will be unclear whether that's an appropriate place for, to let those um, candidates out into the community okay i just the two workshops that I went to, I got the impression, um, and I did go to both of them and took pretty good notes, and I got the impression that the community was going to be involved all the way down until you got your last five candidates. And so, so far what I'm seeing is that the community hasn't been involved at all, and now you have six to, to ten. This, this process was completely laid out this way from the beginning. I, I, I can assure you, and if maybe it, it didn't appear that way. Okay, that, that is not the way it came across to the public at all. So I just am... Um, I just, I, I'm just wondering, all of a sudden we're down to six to ten candidates, and I'm just wondering where the public is going to come in. Yeah. For confidentiality reasons, there is no way that people can see all 28 applicants. It's, it's just appropriate at okay. the board level. Okay. But that is not what was said during the, when, when the consultant was there and also it's when. Absolutely what was said. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I, it would be interesting to go. I just wanted, I thought that the community people were going to be involved until you actually got your final candidate. You know, uh, Kathy, I think I'm seeing, uh, uh, getting a little bit of sense of where the conflict was. 
Um, when we talk about community people, I think maybe we should talk about community representatives on the search. I mean, on the search committee, okay. right, the community and, people on and, the search and committee. And some of those numbers may have been thrown around, but it's, it's the process that's important. If there were, um, if we had, for example, if we had decided to interview 14 people, let's say, and it's, it's the board's prerogative and not only their prerogative, but their responsibility to go through and basically decide who to interview. And we had, say we had decided to interview 14, then those community members along with the board and the staff representatives would be the ones that would bring it down to five people. Do you see what I'm saying? So they would be the ones to narrow it down. And, and they will be the ones to narrow down, let's say that we're gonna interview eight or 10 people. The, the, this board, the community representatives and the staff representatives will participate together to narrow that down. Oh, I just think it's, I think it's important for the public to understand where the community members, where, where that is, because obviously um, I've been to the meetings and it, has, it is not clear to me, and so I just wanted some clarification the, from the you. Other piece, the other piece to know is that they, the community representatives are as full a, um, are, are as full a participant as, as any of the other s staff or teacher representatives that we have on the committee, so that there's, there's not a differentiation. Ultimately, it will get down to um, hearing the input of that entire selection group, at which point it sort of breaks off again, and it, then it is the board's responsibility to identify the person to be hired. So what I'm hearing you saying is that it has only been the school board that has been involved at all in, in so any of the process? This, up to this point, okay. the school board looks at all the applications and identifies who to And interview. none of the representatives from the school, the community, no one, or anything else? Okay. Just the board. Okay. I, this, and then, so does that make more sense? Yes, absolutely. I just, I just needed to, it just isn't clear, and I feel like I've been sort of following it, and, and I just needed some clarification. I think that's I important I think some of the everybody. numbers that were thrown around may have been sort of misleading, so you're thinking, gee, they're already down to six or so, how did they get there? Right, in right, reality, exactly. That was our first cut. And okay. the first cut is the responsibility of the board. Only the board can see those applications. Okay. Now the rest of the group comes in and takes it the rest of the way until we get to some, really, the finalists, at which point the board then takes that responsibility again and makes a final selection. Okay, that makes a lot more sense to me. And maybe some of it came from the fact that we never really talked about the, the, the school representatives or any teacher representatives, and we only were talking about community representation, so. Okay, well thank you for the clarification. Um, okay, um, Athletic Steering Committee. Uh, Athletic Steering Committee met on uh, December 16th. Uh, there's uh, several items that have been brought forward to the committee, including uh, a, a, a request for uh, junior varsity football, a request or a continued request for alpine skiing as a, as a club, a request for a, an athletic trainer, um, a couple of changes for middle school coaching, and some discussion about uh, a contingency plan if the pool does not get finished by mid-November next year, uh, where is the team going to practice and, and that type of uh, thing. Uh, we also discussed uh, the budget ramifications of those requests. Uh, the, the athletic department's request uh, is about uh, $14,500 increase over last year's budget, uh, which is representing about a 4.5% uh, increase. Uh, the, I think the large unknown that we all know about out there is the, is the football uh, issue. Um, the, the football group has been invited to our our uh, workshop uh, two weeks from tonight, so I guess that would be the 26th, 26th um, for discussion about the requests and so forth. Uh, the Athletic Steering Committee did uh, uh, approve football as, as a potential club sport uh, for, to be brought forward to the board. Uh, in terms of the, the swimming pool contingency, uh, Keith, if you uh, have any other information other than what I'm going to say here, please feel free. 
Uh, we're looking at South Portland as, as a potential place to practice and so forth if our pool is not complete uh, in, in November. I, I've had some discussion with the people at South Portland and we we have been very helpful to them in the past and they've had problems and they said they'd be more than willing to help us as well. So I think we'll be all right. Great, great. Just a follow-up comment. The next school board workshop is the 26th of January, and we've scheduled 7 to 7.30 as our period of time to discuss football. Okay. And I've asked Keith to introduce the topic, talking about the procedure, numbers of potential students, costs, any other basic information, and then it'll be open to the floor, to the board, or to the football uh, subcommittee, and anyone else who'd like to come and talk about that. And that'll be from 7 to 7.30. And the athletic trainer position will be in the subsequent conversation, which is going to start at 7.30 when we talk about new positions for next year. Thank you. Thanks. Um, moving on to unfinished business. And there is none on the agenda, and we'll move now into new business. Uh, readings, uh, first readings of uh, several policies, looks like at least 10 of them, um, 10 or more. And Beth, you're going to handle that in, in uh, Kevin's absence? Uh, they are first readings, so we are not officially doing anything on them, just listening for feedback. And Claire is here to answer any questions. Um, there are uh, what are eight or so policies. There's, I'll just say what they are. I'm not going to read them or anything. And if people have questions, they can ask Claire. But they're really to bring us in compliance with all um, federal and state and laws. And these are, these are new policies. These are not revisions to existing policies. I think some are revisions, aren't they? They're revisions. Yeah. They're, OK, they're revisions. Yeah. Um, most of them are new. There's only one that's a revision. They're, most of them were written in 1996, and they're based on the regulations that we're now operating under. And as the regulations are updated, that's going to make some, probably there'll be some changes in the policies. But we haven't had them as adopted policies no. before, except JK, F, and ICB. The, the confusion is existing policies, Here. MSMA policies, or, or um, Cape Elizabeth School Board. I was asking, I knew that they were not um, to our old revisions policies. to They're ours. Revisions and the rest are now. Why don't you read them? The first is IHBA, which is Special Education Policy on Individual Educational Plans. The second one is IHBAA, Referral, Pre-Referral Procedures. The next one is IHBAB, Student Educational Records Policy. <coughs> flip pages. Um, the next one is IHBABA, -A, Notification of Rights under FERPA. Then there is IHBAC, Model Procedure on Child Identification. IHBAD, Model Procedure on Personnel Development. IHBAE, Model Procedure on Parent Involvement. IHBAG, Policy on Programming in the Least Restrictive Environment. IHBAI, Special Education Independent Evaluations. ICB, Extended School Year Services. JKF, Suspension Expulsion of Special Education Students. And the last policy we have for a first reading is not a special education policy. It is EBCA, which would be a new policy, and it's a critical incident crisis response plan. And I think Claire is the one who's qualified. If anyone has questions on the special ed ones, um, they are really to just to bring us into compliance. It was, in some ways, like reading regulations, um, as I read through. I, do we have questions? And that information will go back to the policy, and there'll probably be second uh, readings next month. Okay. Thank you. Uh, move on. Uh, moving on in new business, uh, consideration of the superintendent's nomination to athletic fee positions. I have two. One at the middle school, a returning coach, Aaron Balistreri, indoor track, 
and a new coach, Joe Doan, also indoor track. Joe Doan is a staff member and has coached for us in other aspects. Is there a motion? I move that we accept the superintendent's nominations. A second? Second. Keith. Um, discussion? Questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? 6 0. Consideration of the superintendent's nomination to co curricular fee positions for 98 99. At the high school, natural helpers Andrea Kyer and Katie Lisa, and these positions are paid for from drug free school funds. At the middle school, the art club advisor, Leslie Brown, who was also on ed tech at the middle school. And at Pond Cove, a new position this year, drama, Lynn McGee. Is there a motion? I move we accept the superintendent's recommendations for co-curricular fee stipends. Second. Second. Um, that was Beth. Um, discussion, questions? I had a question about uh, natural helpers. Could somebody just give a quick description as to what that is? Natural helpers. Peter? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the question. Oh, just we want to know a little more information on natural helpers. I'm sorry. <laughs> What's this? What there were questions helpers? going. A little more information on natural helpers. It's a continuing position. Uh, the, the reason that we uh, have uh, included it now instead of uh, in the early fall is uh, because it was being uh, we were applying for drug-free schools uh, grant money uh, to cover that. Um, I didn't realize it had to go through the same co-curricular um, uh, approval. And so we're just finalizing it uh, now. Uh, Ms. Kayer uh, and Ms. Lisa have been running the, advising the natural helpers for several years now. Uh, it was just this year that, uh, well, last spring, Tom and I uh, were talking and realized that the stipends uh, might well be covered by uh, grant monies. Is it a drug education program? Uh, it's not specifically drug education, but it certainly uh, is uh, related to it. it it's training uh, students who have been selected by their peers as natural helpers, uh, giving them the types of information that would be useful to them in working with peers on many issues, including uh, uh, substance abuse issues. Prevention is a it's much more preventive, preventive both uh, for the general student body and everybody would agree that the students involved directly in the training uh, gain a great deal uh, from the training. Day one uh, does uh, some of our training for us and they certainly have an outstanding reputation in that area. Other questions before we vote on this motion? Um, seeing none, all those in favor? 6-0. Uh, moving on to consideration of uh, proposed change in the high school co-curricular allotment of hours. I ask Peter to stay just in case you I have questions. need to have him mm -hmm. comment. Um, recommendation from the Finance Committee? The recommendation from the Finance Committee is to accept the change as requested. Okay, why don't you just give a, anyone okay. want to provide Peter's a brief Peter's overview of what it is that we've changed, Peter? It's a request for a one-year uh, the, the addressing of a, of a very basic inequity uh, in our co-curricular uh, payment structure. It uh, involves taking the 208 hours that are currently allotted to uh, policy debate uh, and using that 208 hours uh, to um, bring the speech advisor or coach to uh, a uh, 408 hours, which would be equal to the Lincoln-Douglas debate uh, position, uh, and take the other 100, 108 hours uh, and provide for a speech assistant. The speech uh, coach right now is working with uh, in the neighborhood of 50 uh, students, and uh, it's almost entirely individual because there are 10 different events, uh, and so there is, there's very little room for group practices and so forth. It's all individual rehearsal. Uh, with the coach and uh, the, as I say, the uh, original 308 hours was a very direct inequity with the debate coach, which was 408 hours. They're dealing with some, you know, almost the same number of students. In fact, speech may be dealing with a few more and the same amount of administrative duties. So it's, it's not increasing the bottom line in the co-curricular area at all. It's redistributing 
ours because uh, Dwight Ely is willing to take the uh, policy debate uh, position for nothing. And you um, get what you pay for. <laughs> <laughs> and Dwight's not here to... Uh, yes, he is. Oh, is he? Oh, he had his head down. Okay. Um, any response, Mr. Ely? I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Um, we need a motion. I move we accept uh, the, the proposed change in the high school co-curricular allotment of hours. Second. Jennifer? Second. Um, discussion or questions? John. My only question would be what we discussed in the meeting, that we have documentation that has been accepted <coughs> by the proper people. Okay. Yeah. And I, I do want to emphasize this is looked at as a one-year solution for this year, and we need to uh, bring a, a more permanent solution to the co-curricular committee. Okay. Other questions? Discussion before a vote? All those in favor? 6-0. <clears throat> and uh, consideration of a teacher retirement. As Nancy Hutton so eloquently explained, uh, we have received a request, a retirement request from Martin Watts, who is a grade eight teacher and who's been with us for 32 years. I recommend that you accept that with regret. I certainly recognize um, how incredible it is to have someone with a 32 year commitment um, and spoken of so highly by Nancy. Um, is there a motion? I move that we accept Marty Watts's res uh, retirement with regret. <laughs> Second. With regret. Um, comments or questions, discussion? I'll just say I've only had one child who's had them, and that's this year, and she's had a great experience in science, and they have learned lots and worked very hard. It's been a very good year. And I was going to say my daughter has them for language arts, and. I, as I'm known as the grammar police amongst my friends, um, he's been a wonderful teacher. And I actually have asked him if I can take his grammar test, um, <laughs> which I will do in the spring. And I'll let you know how well I do. Perhaps you won't be so. I will um, not. I'll be humbled, I'm sure. But well, we certainly, uh, um, on behalf of the board and the community, certainly do um, express our, our best wishes uh, to Mr. Watts in terms of his retirement and our gratitude for such dedication to the community and to the, um, and to the education uh, community. Um, is there a second? Okay, we've already done that. John, um, all those in favor? And 6-0. Moving on to the last item, which is the staff development grant. As Tom mentioned to you, we have applied for some staff development monies, and we'd like the board to make a motion that we be allowed to expend those monies as stated. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion? I move that we can expend those monies as stated. OK. Um, second. second, Jen, discussion or questions? We've already been given the grant, right? No, this is not, no, this we had a similar grant for last year. This is okay. new money. Right. But it is allocated money, so as long as we do the appropriate paperwork, we will receive the money. The appropriate paperwork, Mary. You got it. <laughs> Which is being done in concert. <laughs> Mr. Eismeyer and Ms. Brooms. Other questions or comments on the uh, staff development grant? None. Then all those in favor? And that's 6-0. Before we conclude the meeting, um, there is uh, the school board uh, uh, subcommittee for policy, uh, which was scheduled for the 14th, um, has been postponed. Um, the finance subcommittee will meet again February 9th, their regular meeting, 630, in the Jordan Conference Room, followed by the regular school board meeting on that same day, February 9th at 7.30 here in the chambers. And just a reminder that the next workshop is January 26th in the high school library. From 7 to 7.30, we'll discuss football. And at 7.30, we will review the request for new positions for the 1999-2000 school year. And that concludes this evening's meeting. Thank you very much. Excuse me, can I ask you uh, one question? Oh. Going yes. through the uh, first reading of the different file, I reread this EBCA 
And this is the only one that I find that really doesn't have uh, any direct response to Claire. And I think this is very uh, uh, necessary that the public know that this policy is in, in, in process. And uh, if I may have your indulgence, I would like to read it. This policy. is a critical incident res uh, crisis response plan, file EBCA. It is the policy of the Cape Elizabeth School Department that each individual school will prepare and have in place a critical incident crisis response plan no later than June 30, 1999. These plans will be developed by the superintendent in collaboration with the town safety committee. The plans will be in writing and available at all times in the principal's office at each school. The critical incident crisis response plans will be reviewed and updated following any incident as necessary and appropriate or on a biennial basis. I think the parents as well as the rest of the community should know that we're striving to get that completed. Mm -hmm. And we're well underway. We've been meeting, in fact, we met again yesterday. So we're well underway to toward completion of that. That's um, also, that was, that evolved out of the uh, goal setting right. for, yeah. for this year. Thank you, John. Um, do we have a meeting, to, uh, a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Seconded. So seconded. And discussion questions, seeing none. All those in favor? Six zero. Thank you. Didn't make it thirty, but.